Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. We're looking at illustrative math for sixth grade. This is Unit 8, Lesson 3, representing data graphically. The objective states I can use tables, dot plots, and bar graphs to represent distribution of data. We're going to be looking specifically at frequency tables and dot plots with this particular activity. This is 3.3, been there, done that. Priya wants to know if basketball players on a men's team and a women's team have had prior experience in international competitions. She gathered data on the number of times the players were on a team before 2016. You can see her data summarized right here. Number one, did Priya collect categorical or numerical data? Well, since all the responses are numbers, this is a type of, this is numerical data, not categorical data. Number two, organize the information on the two basketball teams into these tables. So we're going to organize this data in a frequency table. So frequency is how many times do we encounter that particular value. And the nice thing about a frequency table is you can use tally marks if you want so that you can go and order across um, your other data from left to right and not have to try to count up how many you see and possibly miscount. So on the men's team we have a three and then we have one, two, three, four zeros in a row, one, two, three, four, a one, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six more zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six more zeros. Um, and then for the women's data we have a two, and then two threes, and then a one, a zero, a two, a zero, two ones, a zero, a three, and a one. So this is ten, one, zero, one, zero, and over here we have three, four, two, three, zero. Now it says make a dot plot for each table. So we're literally going to put a dot on this um, graphic for every value. So uh, for the men's basketball players, we need 10 dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe I should make those a little bigger. Let's try that again. One. Oh, that's too big. But oh well. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one and a three. Uh, for the women's basketball, we have three zeros one, two, three, and four ones one, two, three, four, two twos one, two, and three threes one, two, three. So now that we've drawn this um, in this very visual way, we can. Uh, see some trends in our data. So we see with those this visualization with all these dots, there's a lot of heaviness on this zero end of our dot plot for the men's prior competitions. For the women, it's pretty evenly distributed uh, amongst the different values, except there's nothing here for four at all. Um, so number four says study your dot plots. What do they tell you about the competition participation of the players on the men's basketball team? So we can say very confidently that almost all have not competed internationally before. Um, and only two players, two out of the 12 players, are uh, returning competitors having competed internationally before. When you look at the women's data, we have all but three have competed before. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 12. So three fourths of the women have competed internationally before. So we could say that 75% have competed internationally before. So there's more experience uh, for prior competitions internationally with the women's basketball team than there is for the men. Again, our objective was I can use tables, dot plots, and bar graphs to represent distribution of data. This, uh, dot plots are a nice visual way to see how the data is distributed. Thank you for watching.